Hello, students. In this session, we will look at the spleen. This image shows the anterior view of the left hypochondrium, where the spleen is seen positioned between the fundus of the stomach and the diaphragm. The spleen follows the Harris's dictum of odd numbers. It is approximately one inch thick, three inches broad, and five inches long, weighing around seven ounces. It lies deep to the ninth, 10th, and 11th ribs. On its visceral surface, the spleen is closely related to the stomach, the tail of the pancreas, and the left kidney. Now let's talk about the blood supply of the spleen. The main artery supplying the spleen is called the splenic artery. This is actually one of the largest branches of celiac trunk. From its origin, it runs a winding course and passes through the lienorenal ligament before reaching the hilum of the spleen. The venous drainage follows a different but equally important route. The splenic vein runs almost straight from left to right, lying behind the body of the pancreas. As it travels behind the neck of the pancreas, it joins with the superior mesenteric vein, and together they form the portal vein, which then carries blood to the liver. Now let's look at the external features of the spleen. What you're seeing in this image is the diaphragmatic surface of the spleen. This is the smooth convex side that lies directly against the diaphragm. The spleen has two ends, an anterior end and a posterior end. It also has three borders, superior, inferior, and intermediate. In addition, it presents two main surfaces, the diaphragmatic surface, which we just mentioned, and the visceral surface, which faces the abdominal organs. A key landmark to note is the splenic notch on the superior border. These notches are a clue to the spleen's embryological origin. They show us that the spleen develops from the fusion of several small masses of lymphoid tissue. In other words, its development is lobulated. Now let's turn our attention to the visceral surface of the spleen. In this view, you can clearly see the three borders the superior, the inferior, and the intermediate borders. Notice again the splenic notches along the superior border, which, as we discussed before, reflect the spleen's lobulated development. The visceral surface itself bears several impressions made by neighboring organs. These include the gastric impression from the stomach, the colic impression from the transverse colon, and the left renal impression from the left kidney. Look closely at the intermediate border. Here lies the hilum of the spleen, the gateway where important structures pass in and out. Within this region, you'll find the gastrosplenic ligament and the lionorenal ligament anchoring the spleen to nearby structures. The splenic vessels also pass through the hilum, bringing blood to and from the organ.